In this video, we'll look at placing wall elements with a more complex shape. We'll create these two walls and set edge offsets for different layers in the wall. Let's start with this wall because it's more simple. So let's go to the element tool again and select demo exterior as our element type. For this element, we can just follow the ARCHICAD wall's levels, so we'll get a triangular shape for our wall. So I'll leave these boxes unchecked. I won't set any edge offsets because those only work for rectangular walls. I won't make any opening offsets either. Then I'll choose Gypsum Interior as my anchor. Then in the More Settings dialog, I'll set Raised Roofs to minus 148mm. Raised Roofs temporarily raises the ARCHICAD roof by the specified amount. My ARCHICAD walls are trimmed to the roof, so they also change height, and so do the ARCHIFRAME elements that are based on the ARCHICAD walls. Once the elements have been created, the ARCHICAD roof returns to its original level, so no permanent changes to the ARCHICAD model are made. Here is a screenshot demonstrating the result. On the left, raised roofs is set to zero, while on the right it's minus 148 millimeters. So in effect, raised roofs creates top edge offsets for all the layers of the element. It should be used when the wall is triangular, in which case the edge offset tool won't work. Here is also a screenshot showing why we need the wall element to be lower than the ARCHICAD wall. So between the wall framing and the top layer of the roof, we need to have 148mm of space for the supporting roof rafters. Finally, I'll choose the AFLM's ARCHICAD layer for my elements and go to the floor plan view to place them by line. Before placing the element, I must check that the roof layer is unlocked so that ARCHIFRAME can change the roof's levels. When placing the element, I'll make sure that this element and the neighboring element intersect. Here's the result in 3D. So we have a gap between the wall element and the top layer of the roof. And the new wall element has the same height as the neighboring one. So now we can move on to creating the more complex neighboring wall. For this wall, I'll set raised roof to zero, but otherwise keep the settings the same. I'll again place the element by line, and then look at the result in 3D. In this case, the wall shape is slightly more complex than the previous ones, because we have four corners instead of three. If I turn on the ARCHICAD layers, you can see that the wall element doesn't have the right shape. I'll open the finished model to make it clearer what we're aiming at. So for the triangular part, we only have a thin 148mm roof rafter resting on the framing. So we need to offset this part of the wall by 148mm. For the straight part of the wall, we need to save space for the thick roof rafters that rest on top of that part. So this wall's height should be the same as the walls on the other side, which we edited in the previous video. Here's a section view where I can measure the height of the wall. So in this case, the height of the framing layer should be 2499.1 mm, and the wall's bottom should be at 2960 mm. Here is a comparison of our wall element and the wall element we want. So we need to cut off this part of the element, and secondly, we have to offset the triangular part by 148 mm. So now I'll go to the floor plan view and open a section of the wall framing layer of my element. Here I could offset the edges of the triangular part of the wall by dragging control points, like this.
However, I need to get a 90 degree angle here, which would require adding control points. Control points can't be added for the wall element object, but I can use the to fill command to get the 90 degree angle. To fill basically picks up the shape of the element and turns it into an ARCHICAD fill, which can be edited flexibly. I'll select the element and click to fill. Now I can place the fill anywhere in this section view. Note that the fill and the element are now linked, so that moving the fill also moves the element. So I don't want to move the fill after placing it somewhere. Now I'll start editing the fill with the standard ARCHICAD tools. First I'll add the helper line here, because this is where the wall should start going downwards. Then I'll offset the slanted edges by 148mm. And now I'll add a new control point here. I also need another helper line to get the height of this wall to be correct. Uh, the height should be 2499.1 millimeters. And now I can again use the offset tool to get the right shape. Now that the fill has the correct shape, I'll click Pick from Fill to inject the shape to the actual element. To see the result, I have to refresh the screen by typing Ctrl Alt Shift R. So here's the result. And now I can also delete the fill. We don't need to repeat this procedure for the interior or exterior layers of the wall. I'll show you the finished model to make this more clear. So these layers don't have a 90 degree angle here, so they don't need any more control points. This means they can be edited without using the to fill tool. So I'll just go ahead and edit the layers by dragging the control points of the element objects. The procedure is the same for all the layers, so I'll only demonstrate one exterior and one interior layer. So we want the exterior layers of the wall to extend up to these roof rafters. I'll open a section view of one of the rafters. So from here we can see that the exterior layers of the wall should be 2680 mm tall. If I turn on the ARCHICAD roof layer, you can see that the interior layers of the wall need to be a little lower than the exterior ones, so that they'll line up with the ceiling finishing inside. So the interior layers will be 2340 mm tall. So next, I'll again return to the floor plan view of the model we're working on, and move the section marker to the windboard layer. I'll open the section and offset the triangular parts of the wall by 148 millimeters. Then I'll make the straight part 2680 mm tall. Here in the 3D view, we see that the interior layer of the wall still has to be fixed, because it's too high. So I'll start from the interior gypsum board layer, and open the section view. 
and I want the interior gypsum layer of the walls to meet the interior gypsum of the ceiling. And here in this view I can see the Archicad ceiling, so it's quite easy to drag the control points to the right place. So I don't necessarily need to use the measurement that I did before. So there. And now I'll just do the other interior layer and the other exterior layers in the same way. But I'll skip that part in this video. Now let's look at the finished wall in 3D. So I'll turn on the roof layer. And I also have to show all elements in the 3D view. So you can see that the roof fits quite nicely with the interior layers of the wall. And I'll just make the roof have a wireframe mode so we can see better. And here on the other side, the exterior layers of the wall uh, are a bit higher than the main framing layer. So it looks like there's some space there between the top layer of the roof and the wall element where the top roof rafters will come. And I also fixed the interior layer of that triangular wall that we did earlier. And next we could do the corner in between these elements, but that's done in the same way as we saw in the previous video, so I won't do that now. But I will add the layer edge offsets for the bottom of the four exterior layers. So now you know how to make more complex wall elements as well. Before the next video, I'm going to create all the wall elements needed for this house. Note that the only other wall where we need to use the to fill tool in this project is the one at the back. I'll turn on the Archicad layer combination so you can see. So this wall here. Let's take a look at the finished structure so that you can understand why. So this wall isn't straight but has a higher part here, which means we need to add control points to it, and that can only be done with the fill tool. And here you can see that this special arrangement is caused by the stairs, which require an opening in the floor.